Welcome to our next lesson, Lex lesson on mathematical finance. Here we will learn what is mathematical finance and our ult ultimate goal is to price financial derivatives and uh, model financial derivatives. Uh, in this lesson, we will learn what is sigma algebra, measure and measure space. First of all, we have to give a definition. What is power set? Assume we have some set, set X, in this case, this another set denoted as two to the power of x is called power set. Power set. By definition, this set is the set of all subsets of x. So any element of power set is subset of x. Why we have this notation two to the power x? Let's solve this problem. Assume we have some uh, set X and assume our set X consists of three elements, A, B, C. A, A, B, and C. Let's, uh, let's solve a problem. Calculate, calculate number, number of elements of elements of 2x. Let's do not use notation 2x. Let's first of all write, calculate number of elements of the set called set of all subsets, set of all subsets of x. So let's calculate number of elements of the set. And this set is set of all subsets of x. The set of all subsets of x is consisting, consists of these elements. Assume we have three places. And of course, here in this place, the first element can exist. Sorry, it can exist one, or it cannot, it can attend one, or it can be absent, zero. So we have two uh, possible variants. So first element A, this element here, it can be one or it can, uh, it cannot be, it can be absent in this place. Next, this element can be here or it can be absent, one or zero, two variants. So we have two times two along the same way for in this place, Next element can be or it, or it can be absent in this place. That's why answer is two to the power three or eight elements. So set of all subsets of X consists of eight elements. And we calculated the number of elements of the set of all subsets. Because number of elements of the set of all subsets of X consists of two to the power three elements, we have this denotion this notation that set of all subsets of X is written like two to the power X. So this is just notation. Okay, next let's define what is a sigma algebra. Assume we have some set F, let's denote it as beautiful F. And this is family, family of subsets of x. So this is the set and each element of the set is a uh, subset of x. And of course this f is some subset of power set because power set is the set of all subsets of x. It consists of all subsets of x and f is just some part of this. So f is the set which is the family of subsets of x. This f is called sigma algebra so F is called sigma algebra by definition if the first F is sigma algebra if empty set is inside F. Next, if A and B is inside F, in this case, union of A and B is also inside F. 
And third, if A is inside F, in this case, complement of A, AC, A to the power C, this is the complement of A, is also inside F. So these three rules means that our F is somehow closed, uh, closed in means of, by means of operations. So it, it is somehow complete, this is closed. And definition of sigma algebra is these three rules. If, first of all, empty set is inside our set, if A and B is inside F, then union of A and B must be inside F. And third rule is if A is inside F, complement of this A is also must be inside F. In this case, F is called sigma algebra. Sigma algebra. Uh, let's give examples. The, what is the biggest and smallest sigma algebra of X? Of course, if you write F is equal to two elements, sorry, first of all, let's say that power set, power set is always sigma algebra because, because empty set is inside power set. It, it contains in itself every element. And if A and B is inside power set, of course, union of A and B also in, inside power set because power set is the set of all subsets. That's why union is also inside it. If some A is inside our power set, of course, complement of A is also inside it because it contains everything inside itself. This is the set of all subsets. So this is the biggest, this is the biggest, biggest sigma algebra, sigma algebra that we can construct on X. And the smallest sigma algebra consists of two elements. This is empty set and, uh, and of course, the set X itself. Uh, obviously, this is also sigma algebra because first, because first, empty set is inside F. So we have first rule. Third rule, if A is inside F, complement is also inside F. So empty set is complement of the whole set X and whole set X is complement of empty set. That's why empty set is inside our F and its complement is also inside it and vice versa. X is inside our F and of course complement of X, which is empty set is also inside F. So third rule is also um, correct. And uh, the second rule is also correct because A, uh, sorry, not A, but empty set and X is inside F. And of course union, union of empty set, union of empty set and X is also, is again X. That's why the union is also inside our F. That's why these two examples of sigma algebra. The first example is the biggest sigma algebra we can construct on X. And second, this sigma algebra is the smallest, smallest sigma algebra that we, ca we can construct on X. Uh, in definition of sigma algebra, here in rule two, we also can write not for two sets, but for countable number of sets of subsets. For example, we can claim that if A with index I is inside F and we have infinite number of AIs, infinite but countable number of AIs, in this case, for F to be sigma algebra, in rule number two, we have to claim that union of AI, where union is from one up until infinity, is also must be inside F. Often in literature, we have additional, additional rule. Let's um, call it rule two one, that uh, it's claimed that if A and B is inside F, A intersected by B also must be inside F. But actually this rule is, we don't need this rule. Why? Because intersection can be expressed in terms of union and Let's solve a problem. Let's solve a problem. Uh, assume we have intersection of two sets, A1 intersected by A2. Let's draw a picture. Assume we have some set X and we have two subsets, A1 intersected by A2. This is an intersection of A1 and A2, but we can 
express this A1, A2 as in terms of unions and complements. How? Assume this is AI and everything except this A1, sorry, A1 is A1 complement. And uh, assume this is A2 and everything beside this A2 is A2 complement. And obviously, uh, what is what is A1 complement union with A2 complement? This is everything, everything, this is everything, but except this part. And if we take complement of this again, it will be right this. That's why we have we have this rule, or let's rewrite it, A1 intersected by A2 is equal to A1 complement union with A2 complement and the complement of this subset. Uh, if we want to write countable version of this formula, it will be intersection of AIs is equal to union of AIs with C. So this is the complement of AIs. And then we have to take a complement of this set. So that's why in definition of sigma algebra, we do not need, we don't need intersection because intersection can be expressed in terms of union. So union in definition is enough for F to be sigma algebra. Next, uh, we will define what is a um, measurable space. This is quite easy. Um, our set with sigma algebra on this set, this pair, this pair, this pair, Uh, is called is called measurable space measurable space so in other words measurable space is some set x and sigma algebra on this set next let's define some function let's call it mu this function is called is called measure if we have three conditions, three rules. This is the function from sigma algebra to the set of positive numbers. And this is the function on measurable space or in a pair of set and sigma algebra on this set. This is measure if we have three conditions satisfied. The first is mu must be non-negative, non-negative. Or in other words, it means that for for any for any a in sigma algebra, this function on this a must be non-negative. Second, in other words, we can say that this means that for for this uh, set for this set for a function mu puts some mass, and this mass is must be zero or positive. The second is mu, this function, puts zero mass on empty set. On empty set. What does it mean? This is a slang. It means that mu on empty set is zero. Or if our A is empty set, in this case, mu on A must be zero. Let's write third rule. Uh, third rule is called sigma additivity. Sigma additivity. Sigma additivity means that this function on this sets AI union with A, sorry, A1 union with A2 and so on is equal to mu of A1 union with mu of a2 and so on or in other notation this is written as mu of union of ai's where i is from one up until infinity is equal to the sum from one until infinity mu of ai's 
So once again, we have measurable space or pair of set X and sigma algebra on this set. This function mu from this sigma algebra, which gives a positive number to any A from this F is called measure. Let's call it measure if, if we have three conditions. This is non-negative, meaning that for any A in sigma algebra, this function gives non-negative mass or no, it corresponds non-negative number. Second, it puts zero mass on empty set. And if our set is empty, in this case, our function gives to this empty set zero. And sigma additivity means that this function of countable addition of AIs is equal to the sum of the measure of each AIs. This is called sigma additivity. And uh, now when we defined what is a measure, this is a function, we can add this measure to this measurable space. This is measurable space and we defined measure. Now, if we take a triplet X set X sigma algebra on this set X and defined earlier function, which is called measure. In this case, this triplet, this triplet is called measure space. So this is quite easy construction. Do not think of it as some cosmic space. This is quite easy. This is not rocket science, actually. Uh, so measure space, this is the tri triplet of some set, some sigma algebra on this set, and function called measure I defined earlier.